new videos every day. So now we're going to talk about the uh, soft tissue components. Um, Charles, um, go back to your slouching position. All right. So here we evaluate and we see that his pecs are tight. Um, a lot of times when people study a lot or they're working on a computer, the ribs, they can kind of collapse a little bit and kind of, your ribs should be a little bit like this, should be some space. But if you're always in that position where you're slouch, you slouch, your ribs can overlap and they can get stuck like that. I've, I've seen it all the time. Um, so we wanted him to sit up, shoulders back. So you can still see he has a little trouble here. I can see it. <laughs> All right. And so um, the problems in the back, when he squeezes his shoulders together, shoulder blades together, that alleviates a lot of the pain between the shoulder blades, which a lot of people have. Um, then we start working, looking at the neck, how he's kind of a little forward, but once we get him, um, he should be back right, right there. It should be the ear, shoulder, down to the hip, should be lined up. So that's what I'm looking for. And so when I see people who come in, that's what I look for and that's what I try to correct. So uh, how does that feel right now? It feels perfect. <laughs> All righty. Charles lying down on the back, obviously. <laughs> um, so what I was saying about the chest and the rib cage, I look for, I can kind of palpate in here and kind of feel around for the ribs and see how much space is in between the ribs. I can go in between here. Sometimes it may tickle, sometimes it may not. <clears throat> also look for the rib cage, how if it's too, if there's too much gap, if it's too uh, close, then that's gonna pull the back and it's gonna make you, you do this. So we gotta open up the rib cage to help you alleviate your, your posture. So what I'll do is, is I look for the rib cage here, which is right here. And I kind of just kind of slowly just stretch. And like if you resist, I'll say, Charles, please take a breath. And then let it out. As soon as it lets it out, the rib cage kind of opens up. Now, if it doesn't move, that means there's something along the way that's holding it from moving. So that's when I go in there and I kind of look for the muscles here. I can find each rib there, make sure that I can feel one now that's kind of like this overlap. So I go in between the rib, let me get on this side, in between the rib here, and I just follow it. I can feel the tissue. Yeah, so I kind of just break it up. You gotta be gentle when you do this, because it hurts. But once I get that broken up, then I can get some movement on the rib cage. And so that helps alleviate the pain in the back. And so it helps you also with your posture. Uh, leading up to that, the, your uh, sternum, sternum is just the bone, it should be really smooth. Well on him, there's some smooth parts, but then you can feel the muscle, how it's it real tight. So it's holding, you see how it holds my shoulders? So if I alleviate that, it helps me open them up. So I go in there and I'll kind of slowly, lightly in the uh, sternum, kind of break up the, the tissue. Say there's like scar tissue in there from working out, obviously he works out. So he has a lot of tissue in here, and that helps the pecs open up. And like I said, it helps your posture open up even better so you can get access to your scapula movement. And one thing, be careful of the uh, xiphoid process. You do not want to push down on it. You want to rub around it. So that, which also leads to the pec, mi pec major, pec minor. So you can see how his shoulders are forward. He's real tight. So if I push down, open them up, kind of stretch it out, and then you want to kind of find the connections here where the origin of the pec minor is. Kind of get that going, massage in here. So now you see me pushing his shoulder back, um, trying to get some mobility on his joint here. Uh, the pec minor is right under here, connects to the third, fourth, and fifth rib. Up in, so it begins up in here. So you kind of want to make sure there's no scar tissue buildup. Um, 
and kind of lift under there. Uh, for women, it's kind of hard. You have to be just not discreet, but you have to kind of be careful. You can't just jump in there like men. It's kind of easy. And so, but uh, women have a women are real bad at this because women hold themselves different. Um, what a lot of what a lot of women tell me is that they uh, when they're younger they were teased about the breasts, so they would do this to their shoulders to hide them, and so that carries on to adulthood, and so you're always like this. So when I see a lot of women, I had to tell them it's okay to open up your chest, and, you know, be proud. Or, anyway, just be confident and not worry about hiding them because it's more about your health than what people say. All right, uh, pecs again. Pec major comes across here. Pec minors up in here, third, fourth, and fifth rib. So we want to kind of massage in here and break up all the, get the muscles moving. If there's any scar tissue, kind of get rid of it. Uh, move it here. You can kind of use his body to do some movement uh, up in here. So one thing you have to remember, the pec major comes across and attaches up in this area. So when this gets really tight, say if someone's typing a lot from holding your shoulder, uh, the mouse, working out, this would kind of shut down some of the bicep, which attaches down in here. So imagine this is tight, shuts this down, this tight. People who type a lot, carpal tunnel, it kind of shuts this down. And so you're limited to the flow, which also goes to your neck. So opening up this area, see now it's moving good. I can kind of, the bicep here, you can see how it comes across here, of course with the deltoid, but I can move the bicep like this, kind of down here, let me see that, right here, bicep, bicep, you want to get this mobile so you can use it, releases here, it kind of goes back, and then we get to the neck. So, that, then under here, we're getting to the scap area. We're gonna get the triceps in here where they attach, terrace major, uh, the lats. <clears throat> so the clavicle here, you wanna kinda see if there's any movement, some mobility there, make sure it's not stuck. Uh, the neck, uh, usually come back in here, get under the neck. A lot of times when you're sitting, when you're sitting like this, these muscles get tight. So you look for the scalings, uh, the sternocleo sternocleomastoid, which attaches here, comes back base of the skull. Um, all this gets forward. So you want to kind of work all this, work a little bit in here. Oh, I'll turn this way. Get all this in here. The base of the skull is important. Because when you're like this position, you get overuse of that muscle, kind of overstrain. So these muscles kind of get atrophy. So when you're in this position, you can kind of get the muscles working. So when you turn your head, the muscles actually move instead of holding it and straining, which pulls on the back. So as you can see, it's very complex. So remember, when you guys go out there and get a massage, make sure that people are working on this. You don't want to just work on the back because a lot of there's therapists that don't really understand how the body works and they just want to work on the back only for your back problems. So you got to remember there's an the opposite. The muscles have to work together. So make sure that you hit getting all this area under the chin. It's very important. There's muscles on here under the chin that attach to your hyphoid bone in here. You got to open all this up. And so for your therapists who, who, you know, who haven't gotten, who are the, the new therapists, I guess, or whoever, you, anyway, the therapist who needs to, you know, think about it and research, think about this when you're massaging people, you want to open them up. And so, so you should be able to do this really easy. Okay. So his range of motion should be, can you turn your head to this side? So he's limited here. He should be almost here. If I forced it, see, you can tell right here 
where his limitations are. So that's where you want to work that. And so just imagine if he's a desk jockey or he sits like this all day. I mean, so you want to be able to have range of motion in the neck all the way. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's it for right now. All right, uh, visit my website, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. <laughs>